Now grabbing him by the hair. Rhodey grabbing Flair's ankles. Flair afraid to let go because if he does, he's coming outside the ring with Rhodey in control of his legs. We don't want that if you're for Ric Flair. Flair takes Rhodey into the top rope, jerks it down into his throat, almost like a judo chop. And now Brody gasping for a bit of win. Ric Flair has to win a fall. He's down one fall to none. He knows now the pressure's on him. The shoe is definitely on the other foot. Flair punishing the windpipe of, Rick, of, of King Kong Brody. Again, breathing, stamina becoming so important. Flair grabbing the arm. Ooh, a punch right into the short rib. Again, attacking that side, the ribs. Trying to hurt Brody where every man, no matter how strong, no matter how many muscles he has, they're vulnerable there. Brody caught in the corner by Ric Flair. Flair leaning into him, trying to stay close to him, trying to take away the size advantage that Brody has, the strength advantage. We talk about a strength advantage for King Kong Brody, sure, but let's not kid ourselves. That doesn't mean Ric Flair was weak. To the contrary, Ric Flair was a finely tuned athlete at the height of his skills right now as the world heavyweight champion. He hooks the arm, basic arm lock now, trying to punish the shoulder a little bit. Can he weaken, even if it's only five percent even if it's only five percent can he weaken one side of king kong brody where brody would favor it and open up open up a spot where flair could attack and perhaps get a pin to even this match of one fall apiece twisting the arm turning the wrist bending the hand back anything to punish king kong brody and once again here just as in the first fall rick flair his wrestling ability coming to the forefront and creating a problem for King Kong Brody. Knee drop right into the elbow. Now here's a story most people don't know about King Kong Brody. Probably about this point in his career was when that left elbow of Brody was actually broken. He had a hairline fracture in the elbow. He never took time off for it because this is professional wrestling. You don't get to go on the disabled list. You don't keep making $10 million a year when you're sitting at home cutting your fingernails. You have to work if you want to make money. Brody's left elbow had a lot of punishment over the years, and by the time before he passed away in 1988, I would guess in early 87, he showed me how his left hand had basically developed what they call claw fingers. The feeling had come out of the ring finger and the little finger. He couldn't move it. And that was because of all of the punishment of wrestling. And here was Flair working on that left arm. He knew that a lot of the bumps that Brody took, because Brody was willing to take to the air with drop kicks and the giant flying knee drop, a lot of that also meant landing on that elbow pointed down there. So that elbow had to be sore and hurting. And Brody also admitted over a period of time, that's obviously what caused that elbow bone to crack. He knew had he lived, he was looking at an elbow replacement somewhere probably in the early 90s. Flair pulling back on the arm, a classic double arm lock. Looks like Johnny Valentine there, doesn't he? Pulling back.